What's good, y'all? It's Will Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out how WWE totally ruined Rusev. They had something on their hands with the whole Rusev day, and they completely butchered it. They butchered it. Vince McMahon clearly didn't like the fact that he had gotten over organically, and they wanted to go in another direction. They didn't want to push the guy like they should have. And then they continue to constantly essentially bury this guy's like character with the whole lana cheating on him with bobby lashley and it was just ah uh, i don't know he had the makings of being a very good heel then a very good over baby face and then they just they just ruined it for no reason other than maybe vince didn't like the way he was organically getting over but we can talk uh, hopefully he does mention that who you know person that made this video because ah bro he was he was so over and they dropped the ball but let's get right into this one hopefully you know they do mention some of the uh, things i i said you know in pertaining to rusev just completely being buried journey in wwe is a tale of unfulfilled potential early in his career he seemed destined for greatness yes. but in the end he was misused and even humiliated on an epic scale. Alexander Rusev debuted in FCW, which was WWE's developmental territory at the time, but it was a bumpy start for the Bulgarian. He tore both his ACL and his meniscus Sheesh. and ended up on the shelf for six months. When he came back, it wasn't long before he broke his neck putting Jeez. him out of action for another nine months. I did not know and that. when he returned, FCW had been rebranded to NXT, and he quickly started making up for lost time. His character was that of a powerful, no-nonsense Bulgarian strongman, but it was his wrestling style that really made him stand out from mm -hmm. the crowd. He used a combination of martial arts and mm -hmm. traditional wrestling moves, and his submission hold was a modified camel clutch that he called the Accolade. Soon after, Lana was introduced as his manager, or social ambassador, as he called her, and it wasn't long before he got called up to the main roster. Rusev made his main roster debut in January 2014 during the Royal Rumble. He entered with the same dominant character as he'd always had in NXT, and it took four superstars to eliminate him from the contest. Rusev and Lana officially debuted on Raw in April 2014. They had something. Where the Bulgarian brute decimated Zack Ryder. WWE then decided to make some changes to his character. They shortened his name to simply Rusev, Rusev. and it was explained that he'd relocated to Russia. Lana started to refer to him as a hero of the Russian Federation, and mm -hmm. they now became explicitly anti-American. Yeah. It was felt that stripping back Rusev's character and aligning him with Russia made him a more easy-to-understand and hateable heel. He went on a massive winning streak, and they booked him against physically big opponents. He wasn't just plowing through jobbers. He was yeah. beating the likes of Jack Swagger, Big E, Mark Henry, and even the big show on pay-per-view. Rusev was violently impressive in this first year on the main roster. Rusev even got involved with The Rock when he made a surprise return to Raw in October 2014. Mm -hmm. Clearly, WWE had plans to make Rusev one of their biggest ever heels, and rubbing shoulders with The Rock certainly didn't hurt things. The peak of Rusev's early career came when he won the United States Championship. He defeated Sheamus for the title in November 2014, and as the US champion, he really dialed up the anti-American character mm. even further. During the Royal Rumble match, they booked him to be incredibly dominant. He entered at number 15, and in the end, it came down to him and Roman Reigns uh -huh. as the final two. Of course, Reigns won that match, but Rusev continued to look like a monster, and many people had him pegged as a future world champion. And so far, Rusev still hadn't been pinned. But yeah. Rusev's feud with John Cena in early 2015 was a turning point. He interrupted an interview with Cena, and the men got into a fight. 
the rivalry between them was pretty basic with yeah. Cena defending America's honor against mm -hmm. the so-called Russian hero. And he wasn't going to lose. If you really think about it, once they went America, US, like America and Russia situation, he was not going to lose leading up to that year's WrestleMania. And ultimately, we got the US Open Championship uh, like series from John Cena. So it kind of worked out that John Cena did win because we got that US Open, which is some of John Cena's best work. So... But it looked like WWE were pushing him to the next level. At Fastlane in February, Rusev made Cena tap out to retain the United States title. And then they clashed again at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. It was here that Rusev suffered his first, first loss, loss by yeah. pinfall. And he also lost his US championship in the process. And this is another reason why I do think, and this is just a tangent, I do think... They're probably going to most likely, I could see them doing the same thing with John Cena and Gunther. Since this is going to be John Cena's last run next year, I can see them doing the same thing with John Cena and Gunther. I don't know. I just, I could see that potentially happen. Just a random thought. After WrestleMania, it started to feel like Rusev had been built up for all those months just to be fed to John Cena. Once that match was over, Vince McMahon seemed to massively lose interest in him. Which was... And so, they Rusev should got stuck in a cycle of uninspiring storylines. This is the problem His right here. With Dolph Ziggler was one of the first signs of trouble. The storyline involved a love triangle with Lana and Summer Rae. Fans were baffled as Lana suddenly left Rusev yeah. and was paired with Ziggler, while Summer Rae was now apparently Rusev's manager and girlfriend. The super athlete who had been presented as a dominant force was now reduced to petty relationship squabbles. Yeah. The angle reached its lowest point when Summer Rae proposed to Rusev only for the engagement to be called off when Lana and Rusev announced their real life engagement. Yes, in mm -hmm. reality, Lana and Rusev were a couple and for yeah. some reason they decided to bring that into the storyline. It was all absolute nonsense. And it badly hurt Rusev's credibility. In late 2015, Rusev joined the League of Nations, which was a new faction made up of non-American wrestlers, including Sheamus, Alberto Del Rio, and King Barrett. They never really clicked because they had nothing in common apart from not being American, obviously. <laughs> the League of Nations that, was split up after WrestleMania 32 leaving Rusev without a direction. He did regain some momentum in 2016 when he won the United States title again, this time from Kalisto at Extreme Rules, but a boring feud with Titus O'Neil did nothing to help his career. His next feud with Roman Reigns did have its moments, but mm -hmm. we all knew how that was going, going to end. end. Yeah. And of course, Reigns... And that's the problem. We knew how it was going to end with John Cena when they went USA versus Russia. We knew how that was going to end. I know a lot of people, oh, John Cena should have did the job. It wasn't going to end that way. We knew that. We knew how it was going to end with Roman. Without a doubt, we knew. I was like, yep, it's, yep, that's it. He's losing. Beat him for the title at Clash of Champions. But the feud with Reigns did have its positive moments. It helped him look like a monster again at times, and it made him relevant at the very least. Uh -huh. But what came next undid all of that work. It was on an episode of Raw in November 2016, where Enzo Amore accidentally exposed himself to Lana backstage, which angered Rusev. The tone was comedy rather mm -hmm. than drama, and yep. so began Rusev's role as a laughing stock. Lana pretended to seduce Enzo and lured him to a hotel room where he was ambushed and beaten mm -hmm. down by Rusev. Eventually, Enzo's best mate Big Cass got involved and then Jinder Mahal joined in with the whole thing ending up with Rusev and Jinder in a tag team match. It was just utter crap from the mind <laughs> of Vince McMahon. Yes, it was. It was stuff like this that made WWE so hard to watch at the time. Yeah. At the 2017 Royal Rumble, he entered at number 18, he eliminated nobody, and then he got thrown out by Goldberg. Yep. It was a far cry from the last two Royal Rumbles where he'd looked so dominant. 
you'd have expected that feuds against John Cena and Randy Orton would have helped rehabilitate Rusev's reputation. Nope. But both feuds just felt empty, like he was being fed to them to make them look stronger. He lost to Cena at Battleground, and then he lost Jeez. to Orton in just 10 seconds at yeah. SummerSlam. Rusev did get revenge on Orton a few days later on SmackDown, but really, it was difficult to care. But something good did happen on that episode of SmackDown. Aiden English, who was known for his theatrical singing, declared that it was Rusev Day, day. Yep. in celebration of and Rusev's victory. Over. What started as a quirky celebration quickly went viral with the fans. Yes. The crowd loved it, and Rusev Day chants started to Rusev ring out day. in arenas yep. across the world. In fact, his partnership with Aiden English became a highlight on SmackDown each week, and Rusev's yeah. merchandise sales went through the roof mm -hmm. as fans rushed to buy Rusev Day t-shirts. And yet, WWE didn't exactly rush to capitalise on his newfound popularity Stupid. in terms of booking. In fact, according to Rusev himself, Vince McMahon tried to convince him that the fans were mocking him while they were chanting Rusev Day. And he was still stuck in mid-card matches like the one at WrestleMania 30. They, they had something. They had something with the, the entrance and him singing Rusev Day. Like, they had something. And because Vince didn't come up with it and it didn't land the way he thought it was going to be, he thought it was just going to be a flash in the pan, and now the fans are actively chanting it, he didn't want to do it. This comes down to, I don't even want to give you a chance even when you're making me some millions. That's what it came down to. He didn't want to do it. 34, where he wrestled in a fatal four-way match for the United States title. He was the one who took the pinfall, by the way. WWE split up his partnership with yep. Aiden English in September, where they teased a storyline where English was claiming that Lana had cheated on Rusev with himself. And that was the end of Rusev Day. Then Rusev played hot potato with the US title, winning it and then losing it back to Shinsuke Nakamura in quick succession. Then for some reason, the men ended up in a tag team together that went absolutely nowhere. But what came next made us all wish that they kept the tag team together. The love triangle began in September 2019 Ooh. when Bobby Lashley made his return. And we just watched a video talking about this. Match and passionately kissing uh, Lana on the stage. This segment was so awkward and uncomfortable and it set the tone for what would become a deeply unpopular angle. Week after week, there were segments that showed Lana and Lashley in increasingly suggestive situations, much to the anger of Rusev. The angle wasted loads of screen time and it was just embarrassing to watch. This is wild, This so-called storyline <laughs> ended up with so Lana in Lashley's arms while Rusev was reduced to the role of humiliated husband. Each week he was either shown as being heartbroken by Lana's actions or being beaten down by Lashley. The highs of Rusev day were starting to feel like decades ago as the angle dragged on into 2020 it felt like it would never end. The only person who was probably enjoying this was Vince McMahon. It was reported that he got a kick out of the storyline. Of course he did. I mean, McMahon seemed to be obsessed with the idea of Lana cheating on Rusev, which is pretty sick of him, considering they were married in real life. Yeah. And then, mercifully, Rusev's WWE career came to an end. Yep. McMahon decided to fire a bunch of talent en masse in April 2020, and Rusev's name was on the list. They kept Lana under contract for another 14 months, and then they got rid of her too. Uh -huh. In an interview, she said that she found it very difficult working for the company without her husband by her side. For me personally, it was harder when Miro got let go. Just in general, I was a lot more depressed I was a lot more sad. That fucked me up. Isn't it just typical of Vince McMahon to enjoy messing with people's lives? Yeah. Of course, he spent the best part of five years messing with Rusev and Lana on screen. Yeah. And he probably got a kick 
out of that too. Yeah, man. Vince ruined him. I don't know if this is true, y'all. Correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong on this. I do believe there was like some type of rumor where because they had announced that he was legitimately married to Lana. And I, I think they were doing some type of angle. Like he said in the video, I think Vince was upset about that. And that could be one of the other reasons why he just decided to say, fuck it. I mean, Vince is petty, so I don't know how true that is. I I think I've heard that in a video somewhere, someone talking about it. So correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, cool. I can I can say I'm wrong on that. Let me know in the comments down below. But either way, Vince had the option to really make this guy be a potential world champion. And he did. Simple as that. He chose not to for whatever reason. So comment down below. Let me know. What's your favorite, if you can think of one, what's your favorite Rusev match in WWE? Your favorite match or feud that you remember that you thoroughly enjoyed and, and wish, you know, they would have expounded upon? Let me know down below. I appreciate all love support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.